The following worship service is paid for by Main Street Living. Jesus came into the world, as he said, not to condemn the world, but to save it, to save the world. And that's why it pays to be a Christian. The Christians gain the ultimate victory of eternal salvation in heaven before the throne of a loving Father and God. Malachi records, But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. The worship service will begin after opening hymn. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we make our confession before the Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us for all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost is from the book of Malachi the prophet, the fourth chapter. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. 
You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and rules that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is written for us in the book of 2 Thessalonians, the third chapter. Paul the Apostle writes to God's people, Finally, brothers, pray for us that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored as happened among you, and that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men, for not all have faith, but the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord about you, that you are doing and will do the things that we command. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. Now we command you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness and not in accord with the with the tradition that you received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us, because we were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor we worked night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you. It was not because we do not have the right, but to give you in ourselves an example to imitate, for even when we were with you, we would give you this command. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. For we hear that some among you walk in idleness, not busy at work, but busy bodies. Now such persons we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. As for you, brothers, do not grow weary in doing good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter. While some were speaking of the temple, how it was adorned with noble stones and offerings, Jesus said, as for these things that you see, the days will come when there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when these things are about to take place? And he said, See that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time is at hand. Do not go after them. And when you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified, for these things must first take place, but the end will not be at once. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be various earthquakes and in various places famines and pestilences. And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be your opportunity to bear witness. Settle it, therefore, in your minds not to meditate beforehand how to answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends, and some of them they will put to death. You will be hated by all for my name's sake, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your lives." 
But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation has come near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let those who are inside the city depart. And let not those who are out in the country enter it, for these are days of vengeance to fulfill all that is written. Alas, for women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days. There will be great distress upon the earth and wrath against this people. They will fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive among all nations, and Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And there will be signs in sun and moon and stars, and on the earth distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Shall we now confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The sermon text for this 23rd Sunday after Pentecost is from the book of the prophet Malachi, the fourth chapter. If someone asked you, is it worth it to be a Christian, what would you say? Would you have to think about it for a minute or would you answer in the affirmative right away? Of course it's worth it. The non-Christian, because they have not tasted the Christian life, is skeptical. They don't know. They don't know what it is to taste and see that the Lord is good. So they're unsure. The true Christian is sure. Our Lord Jesus has said many things to assure us and encourage us and even to warn us about the Christian life. So we know beyond a doubt that the Christian life is worth everything.
for it was worth everything and is worth everything to the Lord. Jesus said, So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. That's the greatest encouragement that anyone can hear. He also said, But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. In that statement, our Lord speaks seriously. Essentially, Jesus tells us, whoever does not belong to me will be cast away from my Father's presence. And we believe this to be true. Yes, it is worth it to be a Christian. Christians are blessed because we receive and we win great and decisive victories over Satan and those aligned against our faith. It doesn't always seem that way. It seems as if the victories are gained by others and not the Christians. But the true and decisive victory was won by the Lord Jesus Christ on his cross. And it belongs to all who trust in him as Lord and Savior. The world, that is that philosophy of life established apart from God and opposed to God, turns away from the Christian faith and often makes life miserable for the church. Yet Christians have the true and the lasting victory. Unbelievers look down on God's people, but according to the Bible, the prophet Malachi declares the time will come when they will be trodden underfoot. They'll be like ashes under the soles of your feet. This is an ancient warning for people of every age in time. Malachi concludes in his writing, For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and the evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. This is a prophecy of God's judgment upon the wicked. It shows what happens when people fail to recognize the voice of God and when they had the opportunity, closed their hearts to him. Disaster comes. God is very serious in his warnings. Did he not say to his people, I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God? Declaring it in human terms so we would understand what he means. He has created all people, and so they are called to serve him. Because he is God, he has the right to give his commandments. Because he's created men and women and all things, he warns that he will carry out judgment upon all who transgress his laws and his commandments. And how many people there are who go on about their lives ignoring God, unconcerned about God's will, following the sinful paths of the generations before them. And with each succeeding generation, the sins of the people become worse and worse. And how sad and tragic it is. Finally, God's patience comes to an end, and he carries out his judgments. In history, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah are key examples of what will happen to the world when the last day comes. The Bible tells us that on that day there will be great lamenting when they see the Lord coming in the glory of heaven, surrounded by his holy angels. They will look upon him whom they pierced with nails on the cross they'll realize how foolish it was to ignore the pleas of God to wake up and return to him and repent. They'll realize the Christians weren't so foolish after all and that Jesus Christ is Lord. 
And then it will be too late. And they'll have to pay for their sins forever. This is the reality that God has revealed to us. Jesus came into the world, as he said, not to condemn the world, but to save it, to save the world. And that's why it pays to be a Christian. The Christians gain the ultimate victory of eternal salvation in heaven before the throne of a loving Father and God. Malachi records, But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. How beautiful is this message to the people who repent of their sins and ask for God's forgiveness. These are the people who hear and appreciate the word of God. They do not want to break his commandments because they love him and do not want to offend him. By the power of the Holy Spirit, this love has been created in their hearts. They will be relieved of all the misery that they experience on earth. They will be healed from all troubles as the Son of Man, the Messiah. Jesus Christ will come with healing in his wings, take away all their troubles of heart and soul and mind and body. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and rules that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. and He will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction." These words are first written to the people of Israel. The prophet Malachi pleaded with the people to hear the word of God. He showed that God provided his people with prophets and through them declared the great truths to the nations of the world so all would hear. He provides those to preach and to teach so people will turn and do the will of God. How good God is to do this for us. But a person or a nation that does not turn to God can expect eventual ruin. Not only are these words spoken to the people of Israel so long ago, they're spoken to us today. Let all of us come to Jesus Christ and give ourselves entirely to God that we may gain the victory that he's won for us already. We know we haven't deserved his goodness because of our sins. We sin daily and we sin much. But God loves us. And he sent his one and only son into the world to save us. What glorious news. God gives us eternal life through his son Jesus who died for us on his holy cross and rose victorious bodily from the grave. Our victory over the evil one and anyone and anything aligned with him comes through Jesus. Jesus has redeemed us. We who once were lost and condemned in his great love for you and me, he has purchased and won us by his precious blood. And we thank him. In Jesus' name, amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Shall we now pray the prayer which the Lord Jesus taught us to pray? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
receive the Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. I'm Pastor Adam Moline, Associate Pastor here at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska, where Main Street Living, Lincoln, is filmed. I want to thank you for watching our program this morning. We pray that it's been a blessing to you. In the same vein, if it has been a blessing to you, we ask you to help support our ministry. You can send donations to 3825 Wildbriar Avenue, Lincoln, Nebraska, 68516. Make them addressed to Main Street Living, Lincoln. We thank you for watching this morning, and we pray God's continued blessings upon you through His Son, Jesus Christ, our, His crucified and risen Lord and Savior. Amen. Send your comments and contributions to Main Street Living, Lincoln, 3825 Wildbriar Lane, Lincoln, Nebraska, 68516, or visit us online at MainStreetLiving.com. This has been a production of Main Street Living Incorporated in conjunction with the Nebraska District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and its member churches.